Hi, welcome to another Flip Learning video. Today we're going to look at the circulatory system. Okay, so looking at the um, syllabus points, we need to look at the students learning about. So what you'll learn about today, and hopefully I can give you a shine, um, shine a bit of information about this, is firstly the, uh, the components of blood. What's the blood made of? The second syllabus point uh, would be the structure and function of the heart, arteries, veins, capillaries. So all the cells involved in, uh, within the circulatory system. Uh, we then look at the pulmonary and systemic circulation. And finally, we'll look at blood pressure. So hopefully by the end of the video, you'll have enough content to be able to analyze um, the movement of blood throughout the whole body um, and also the influence the circulatory system and respiratory system has on the efficiency of movement. Blood is more heavier, thicker and more viscous than uh, water. And it sort of makes up about 8% 8, 8 of our uh, weight. Um, in a normal human body um, or human male body, it's weighs, it's, you have about five to six liters of blood. For uh, the average female body, it's about four to five liters of blood. So let's have a look at the uh, four components of blood. First component is red blood cells. What blood, red blood cells do is they carry oxygen and carbon dioxide around the body um, and they also contain iron and protein. Our next uh, um, component is white blood cells. So what white blood cells are is they're responsible for fight and infection. Uh, the next one, platelets. Platelets um, clot blood so to avoid excessive bleeding. So when um, you have a cut um, anywhere on your body and there's excessive bleeding, it's the platelets that form that scab. And our final um, component of blood is plasma. And plasma is that liquid form in your, um, in your blood. It's the, it's the straw colour. And what it does, it's um, predominantly made up of water and oxygen. Food, water and oxygen are essential for the existence of human life. Blood transports all these substances through various channels called blood vessels. Blood vessels involves arteries, veins and capillaries and these keep the blood flowing throughout the body We also have a pumping system and the heart is the pump which is composed of muscle that pumps throughout the body, beating approximately 72 times per minute of our lives. The human heart has four chambers, the right atrium, the left atrium, the right ventricle and the left ventricle. There are also four valves in the heart and these valves are the tricuspid valve, the mitral valve, the, the aortic valve and the pulmonic valve. These valves are one-way valves. therefore the blood can only go through it one way. Now that you've seen the structure of the heart, let's find out how it works. So the blood becomes oxygen rich by absorbing oxygen in the lungs. The function of the heart starts when the oxygenated blood is carried from the lungs to the left atrium of the heart by the means of the pulmonary veins. The left atrium relaxes the blood is pumped into the heart. When the left atrium contracts, the left ventricle relaxes simultaneously. The left atrium pushes the blood into the uh, left ventricle 
to the one-way valve. When the left ventricle tracks the blood, it is pumped into the aorta, which carries the oxygenated blood to different parts of the body except the lungs. Oxygenated blood reaches the different parts of the body through the blood vessels called arteries. The arteries get branched into capillaries, which then reaches to different organs of the body. The blood becomes deoxygenated and the blood capillaries gets mixed and forms richer blood vessels called the veins. The veins carry the deoxygenated blood back to the heart. The blood vessels that carry the deoxygenated blood um, heart are known as the vena cava. The deoxygenated blood from the different parts of the body enters the upper right chamber of the heart which is called the right atrium. So this allows the blood to flow into the right ventricle which contracts with the expansion of the right atrium through the one-way valve. The right ventricle then contracts pushing the blood into the pulmonary artery. The pulmonary artery carries the deoxygenated blood to the lungs. The lungs oxygenate the blood by exchanging the gases and flows back into the heart through the pulmonary vein and then the circulatory system starts all over again. A beating heart contracts and relaxes. Contraction is called systole and relaxing is called diastole. During systole, your ventricles contract, forcing blood into the vessels going to your lungs and body, much like, say, tomato sauce being forced out of a bottle. The right ventricle contracts a little bit before the left ventricle does. Your ventricles then relax during diastole and are filled with blood coming from the upper chambers, the left and right atria, and then the cycle starts all over again. Let's look at blood pressure now. And what blood pressure is, is the strength of the blood pushing up against the walls of the artery. So as we all know, blood flows through the arteries and uh, when it's pushed up against the wall, it causes more blood pressure and it could be um, a bit dangerous. Um, we also looked at just recently the systolic and the diastolic blood pressure. So uh, relate that into this to understand um, what happens when the heart contracts and relaxes. Um, let's just go outside now and I'll show you a bit of a practical um, demonstration of blood pressure. All right, we've got a hose here and I'm just going to give an example what blood pressure might do. So imagine this being our artery. So the water is flowing through it and the water, you can, think, you can imagine that being uh, plasma because it's straw coloured, so that's without the oxygen. Um, so it's flowing through it quite nicely and that's hopefully how, how a heart would like to uh, work. However, if for example, atherosclerosis um, builds up inside the arteries, it becomes less of a passageway for the blood to flow through. And what happens, it's harder for the blood to go through. So imagine this being blocked and there's less blood flowing through our bodies, back to our hearts, etc. So therefore we're getting less oxygen. So imagine if in our bodies um, we have a full blockage okay, of our arteries, no blood gets through. And so therefore it might cause a heart attack or even a stroke. It's not hard to see. 
see that is the most important part. The first step is to gather up oxygen. Sends blood to the lungs, back to the heart again. Next up, we'll talk about the arteries. They take blood from the heart to where it's gotta be. The biggest artery, the main transporter. Right next to the heart, it's called the aorta. Taking blood from the heart to the cells and back. Dealing with all things vascular and cardiac. Capillaries, arteries, and veins all the same. Circulating is the name of the game. Uh, Taking blood from the heart to the cells and back. Dealing with all things vascular and cardiac. Capillaries, arteries, and veins all the same. Circulation is the name of the game. Hey. From the arteries into the capillaries, all your organs and muscles become the beneficiaries of all the oxygen and nutrients they bring through. Very tiny vessels inside of the body tissue. And now the oxygen's gone. But first we got some carbon dioxide waste to take on. And it's into the vein and back to the heart again. And let the whole cycle start again. Taking blood from the heart to the cells and back. Dealing with all things vascular and cardiac. Capillaries, all the reason, veins, all the same. The circulation is the name of the game. Oh. Taking blood from the heart to the cells and back. Dealing with all things vascular and cardiac. Capillaries, all the reason, veins, all the same. The circulation is the name of the game. Hey. Taking blood from the heart to the cells and back. Dealing with all things vascular and cardiac. Yeah. You give me that hummingbird heartbeat Spread my wings and make me fly The taste of your heart 